All right, this is going to be a sealed set review for white uncommon rares and mythics. And then after that, we'll do a little bit just looking at the color in general. Uh, here we go. We're going to start off with Battle Shield Warrior. 3 mana, 2 2, 2 mana, boast. Creatures you control get plus almost one on a turn. Is this, this effect is a lot better than it looks. Because it is a 3 mana 3 3, or at least it threatens to be, which is almost as good. Which is almost as good as, as being one. Um, Inspiring Unicorn was good. Which one was Inspiring Unicorn? Was that the 4 mana 2 2? Oh, yeah, 4 mana 2 2. Whenever attack creatures you can control. Yeah, yeah, that card was good. I think that card might be better than this, though. Uh, no, see... This type of card is deceptively better than it looks because... Say your opponent has a 2-3. And you attack with this. They're not going to block, right? They're, they're only going to take 2 damage, but it attacked like a 3-3. Three, three. So just the mere threat of being able to use this is sometimes better than what it is, is, is. It makes it look... The threat of activation is better than it looks. It doesn't actually have to be a 3-3 three, three every time. Yeah, the threat of power has power. Right. Like, if you have three creatures... If you have three 2-2s two and your opponent has a 2-3 and they're at 9 and you attack with all three, they, like, they have to block. Right? So it actually has the power, but... If they're, say you have two two twos and they have a two three and you attack with both, they don't have to block, but you don't have to activate either. Yeah, and, and like typically where, like the longevity and the, how well the, the, the level of the set plays is based on cards like this, where there are decisions to be made. Like if you attack and they don't block, do you pay two mana to get an extra two damage in? You could. You can also foretell with that mana, though. So if you're not foretelling, you're kind of giving away some information there. But I think this card is way better than it looks. And I like that it's creatures you control got plus one plus one instead of creatures that are attacking. I don't know if it's going to matter. But I do like that it's just all your creatures. They could have easily made it to your attacking creatures or something. They could have easily done that, but it, it's it's a white card. I would have expected it to do something like that. It has sort of limitation. But what I think is likely for this to happen is this is gonna force your opponent to have a really bad block. They're gonna have to trade down with what this card is trying to do. Or if they do trade with this card, they're going to take like 2 or 3 damage. Or potentially 5 or 6 damage, right? So imagine they have a 3-3. Three, three, and you have like a 2-2 two, two, and a 2-2 two, two, and like a 1-1 one, one flyer, right? And you attack. They block this. You, you pay the team mana. They took 5 damage, right? I mean, they're only taking two more damage, but they're, they're, they're but you push through a two-two, and your one-one's getting through anyway. So you like you push through between like you know two and five damage or whatever whenever you attack with this, they have to block it down. And if they block it with a four-four, you just let it die, right? Why don't you just let it die? You don't have to use it. I, I, I think I'm probably not. I think this card, I'm probably not going to play it a lot of the time. But it is an interesting effect, and I'm glad it's in the set. This is definitely a play with a card. If there was, if there was token makers in the set, I didn't see one in common, really. There's like that 2 to 1 when it died to make a 1-1. One, one. But if there were token makers, this card gets a lot better. But if you're playing with like actual pieces of cardboard, this copy of effect is a lot less, lot less good. Speaking of token makers. Okay. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white spear token with flying. Holy moly, this is a 9 this, this might be a 10. 
This is a 2-2 two -two that makes two 1-1s one -one flyers for two mana. I mean, obviously not on turn two. This card is good. Yeah, it works with Fortel. Now this is, yeah, this is, and, and historically these cards have been blue. <laughs> so I was like, what is white doing getting playable magic cards? What is going on? Yeah, I would have expected this to be a 2-1 or a 1-1 one -one or an 0-3. 2, two. Yeah, dude, play this card. This card's great. I look forward to playing this one. Yeah, you feel betrayed? I feel betrayed. Thinking this card exists and in white. Maybe they learned some lessons. Maybe they're like, oh, wow, so this is how we can make playable white cards in limited. All right, let's go. Yeah, it is a spirit that doesn't fly, which is weird. But I'm not I'm not sure what it like what what a spirit is made of for it to obey gravity. <laughs> Why can't it just go wherever the hell it wants? But <laughs> Divine Gambit. Exile target artifact creature or enchantment in opponent's controls. That's good. Two mana, great. That player may put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. Oh, it's even target creature, artifact, or enchantment in opponent controls. Can't do it to yourself. This is a yikers. Um, I wouldn't put this as a one because I can imagine... Wait, this doesn't even hit Planeswalk. I was about, just about to say... If this could hit Planeswalkers, it can't even hit Planeswalkers. Your opponent could put a Planeswalker into play, but it can't even kill Planeswalkers. That's... that's bad. Yeah, I mean, if they have something that has to die, and they're like a low-to-the-ground deck, and you just don't care, right? Like, if you're gonna kill their, their 5 mana 4 4 and they put a 2-2 two into play, why do you care? Right? I mean, this is a two. I mean, it the, the effect is powerful. It's a two or a three. I'll, I'll put it as a three. It's a card you can board in. It's even a sorcery. Yeah. Well, you don't want to. You don't want to get yourself blown out by it, right? So. The effect is powerful, and imagine if imagine if black had a discard theme, right? If black had a discard theme, then this card would be great in white-black, right? This would be like a 7 or an 8 or a 9 in white-black. So it kind of just depends on what else is in the set. I would expect... Yeah, I would expect... You can start this in the sideboard and not be disappointed. We can just go from there. <laughs> Target creature gets plus 1, plus 1, and gains double strike until end of turn. I'm going to lose this card. I'm going to lose so much of this card because I will never play around it. I will never, ever play around this card, and I will always lose to it. I'll be at 12. They attack with a 5-5. Five, five. It'll be like, yeah, I'll go to 7. And they're like, nope, dead. I'm like, okay. Understand. We'll have a good day. But I'm so unlikely to play this card. So I'll put it as a five. Uh, combat tricks. I, I think the the I think the, the other white combat trick is better than this. Despite the despite this having a way higher ceiling. Despite this having a way higher ceiling. I think the other card is way better. Which is uh Wings of the Cosmos. I think Wings of the Cosmos is better than this. So, three mana is a lot to pay. Don't say it costs one, but if you're an aggro deck that has this, this is, this is going to cost three. No. That's a pass for me.
Rune of Sustenance, our rune. Enchant permanent, enter the battlefield, draw a card. All right, you have my attention. As long as Enchanted Permanent is a creature, it has lifelink. Hmm. As long as Enchanted Permanent is an equipment. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's talk about the good things. The good things is you can actually just cycle this, right? It doesn't have to be on a creature. If you turn two, you're like, oh, I don't have a two drop. Oh. Okay, put it on my land. My land is now a rune of sustenance, right? So it cycles. So, yeah, it does draw a card, and if you have like two spells in one turn matters, this will help you do that, right? Because it's a cycler. But if you're going to do that, I, I think Revitalize might be better, just depending on the card. I think it's I think the bottom card is, is Shrink and Text, right? Equipment. You have between, like, zero and two equipment in your deck a vast majority of the time. Yeah, I, I think this is either a five or a six, depending on the deck. It's super dangerous to target a creature with this. It's it's a problem with all auras, right? Is you go to enchant your perm your your cool creature, your craw worm with the rune of sustenance, and your opponent responds with like four mana kill your dude. And you're like, oh man. And then like you lose your dude, you don't draw a card of rune of sustenance, you get one for two. It's not ha it's not a happy place to be. This is going to be better. Yeah, it is. You're right. This can reasonably gain five to six life. And be like revitalize. Yeah. Yeah, you can put it on a vehicle and it is a lot better when you put it on a vehicle, but you're a lot less likely to get blown out by a removal spell in response for sure. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Because it does say enchant permanent. This is, they've learned a lot of lessons when it comes, when it comes to auras. Right. Like, the fact that this is going to chant any permanent, so you, you can cycle it. Worst case scenario, you can put it on your land. So it's never, like, never stalled. If you, you have no creatures in play, you top deck this, you're like, oh, man, if only I had a creature to, to put this on to draw a card. But no, I mean, it's, it's going to be a five or a six for sure. Shepherd of the Cosmos. Six mana, three, three flyer. When it enters the battlefield, return target permanent card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now, wait a minute. This is a, this costs two or less. Okay. All right. White, white can draw cards. Okay. I'm listening. Yeah, this is like an eight. You always play this. And it's a permanent card. It can be a creature. It can be a trinket. It can be a rune. I'm on board. I can't believe they made this card. I can't believe white gets to do this. I will compliment them that I will compliment Watsi that I have never seen White draw as many cards as they have in this set so far. We're only halfway through. This is amazing. Maybe investigate. The investigate set was the one that was before this, right? That had a draw card on a bunch of white cards. This card's great. I'm looking forward to playing with this one. Yeah, three but inspector, yeah. They had a three mana three two when it died to investigate, right? Or they had three mana three two when it dies, but you can pay to make a one one. Make two one ones. Yeah, this this card's great. Looking forward to playing with this one. Spectral Steel. 
Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two, plus two. Uh oh. Exile spectral steel from your graveyard. Return another target R. Or Kramer card of your graveyard. Okay, well, it's a two mana two two that's trying to like, hey, if you go all in the Aura route, this will rebuy one of them. I'm off it. I'm off it. Auras, there were there have been auras that have been three mana flash plus two plus two auras, and they have not been good, <laughs> right? So, if there was a pacifism, like there was a card called Manacles of Decay, right? Uh, uh, oops. Which was it was an it was an aura that you can pay mana to sh to like shrink the creature and kill the creature so that the aura would go into the graveyard, right? So it'd be like an aura removal spell that also goes to the graveyard. If white had cards like that, then we'd be talking business, right? Because then you can rebuy your, your you can rebuy your terminate when this goes away. But that's not what this does. This also gets a lot better if there was looting in the set. Now, I don't know if there's a Merfolk looter in the set, which is a looter is draw a card, discard a card, right? That's that name after card Merfolk looter. It has an activated ability that does that. Or rummaging, which rummaging is it's a, generally a red ability, which is discard a card, draw a card. Now, if there is looting or rummaging going on, this card gets a lot better, right? I'm going to expect that there isn't. And this is a card you, do, you just don't play. Usher of the Fallen. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. I'm on board. One mana, two, one, boost. One on a white boost, create a one, one. I'm on board, this card's great. You, you generally don't play one or two drops, or you don't play almost any of them in your steel decks. You play like, you know, th between, you know, two and five cards that cost, that cost two or less total in your deck, right? But, this is good. This is good. Yeah, it's a very good Savannah Lions. It's a very proud Savannah Lions. I like it. I like that you're not... The, I do like that you're not forced to commit to making the 1-1 one, one on... Like, this is better than it being like an attack trigger, right? If it was just an attack trigger, when this attacks... You may pay two mana if you do make a 1-1, one, one, right? It's better than that because you can see what happens in combat before you before you have to commit to your two mana. I like it. This is probably going to, like, I imagine myself losing to this a lot. Keeping a slow hand and just getting owned by this. Because if you're on the play and you have Usher of the Fallen, and your opponent has a slow hand where they're going to do nothing on turn one and then foretell on turn two, you could potentially go out ahead with, like, a 2-1 and a pair of 1-1s. One, and when you all, you'll have, with just this card going into turn three or turn four. And even if you if you can't attack again, if, if all it does, like three mana, make a two one and a one one is enough, it's a card you would play. Especially when it's, it's three mana over two turns. That's a card you would play. And I think this card is better than that. I like it. Valkyrie's Sword. When Valkyrie's Sword enters the battlefield, you may pay four and a white. If you do... Oh, it's like a kicker card. Okay. But I guess it's kicker that works with that other angel, right? Because you can enter the battlefield through not being cast from your hand. All right, so it's, that's what it's trying to do. If you do... Okay. Create a 4-4 four, four white warrior in, with flying and vigilance... Oh, and attach it. Okay. Okay. So this is a 7-mana 6-5 Flying Vigilance with an equipment left over. 
or you can just have it be the medium minus equipment. How I don't know how you're gonna get this into play and pay five mana. Alright. I don't know how you're gonna do that. Like, because best case scenario, this costs four to for like four to foretell this, right? So you just have, you just have nine mana and this be in your graveyard? That's just not gonna happen. You're white. I think this is, I mean, depending on your deck, you're pretty unlikely to play this card. If it was three on, it was three in the front and two in the back, it would be good, right? If it was two mana to move around. If it was three plus four, right? And then two to move around, it would be a lot better card. Yeah, it also doesn't give Vigilance on its own. You're right. It doesn't give Vigilance and Flying on its own. No, I think I think this is bad. I think this is bad. Yeah, the the equip equipping for three mana is way too much. But like back in Mirrodin Block, there were they they when they first like made up equipment, right? They they had Leonin Scimitar, I think it was Volshock Battle Gear, and Volshock Morningstar, I think what it was. Right? And it was like one mana for plus for Leonin Scimitar, which is one mana one one, plus one plus one, and then one mana to equip. That card sucked. There was a three mana three three, or a three mana equipment that gave plus three plus three and three to equip, and that card sucked. Right? But then there was Volshock Morningstar, which was two cost artifact, plus two plus two, equipped two, and that was just right. That car was amazing. Right? So. And th this leans way further into the plus three plus three, except that it doesn't even do that. It's plus two plus one. Yeah, th this is. This is. This is poo. You'd bring it in if the matchup was really slow and you had a lot of ways to draw cards to get to to get to seven mana, but this is nope. Destroy all cre five mana destroy all creatures. If it was just that a card, this is a card that you would not play. Five mana rats are typically not playable. In my in my in my humble opinion. Five mana rats have historically not been playable and sealed. Um they can be seen from a mile away, and it is super easy to play around. It's very often a two for two. Like, you play... Even if you have... Here's the problem that rats have historically had, right? Even... Even for Day of Judgment, four mana wrath, it was a card I would almost never play. Right? And so this card is worse than Day of Judgment in some scenarios. Um, but it, just, just off the bat, if it was five mana, what happens is your opponent plays a three and you have a three and you have a, and you have Doomscar, right? It's like, do you play your three drop? Do you not? In, in what universe do you play did you do you like keep a seven card hand? Your opponent plays a three drop. You play three mana. Your and you have three mana on turn three and all your colors and you don't play a card. Like in what universe does that? Now obviously you foretell on turn three, right? But I'm just saying. I'm just saying if it didn't have foretell. Okay, then your opponent plays a four, right? And then on the next turn you you still like do it. You still just don't play anything. So you t you you take ten damage, right? And then at this point, the, the gig is up. The gig is up. Because your opponent plays a 3-drop and a 4-drop, and you don't do anything for your 3 and 4 mana. The gig is up. They're just not going to play a 5, and you're going you're gonna to take 10 damage from their 3-3 three, three, and 4-4, four, four, right? 3 and then 7. And then you're going to Wrath, and they're going to play a creature, and you're going to be at 10 life. Right? And so that's why Wraths have historically always been bad and limited. 
in my humble opinion. But this is different because you're not actually, the gig isn't up when you foretell. Because it's face down and you can foretell on turn three when they play a three drop. And they're like, oh, well, I mean, that could be anything. That could be a four mana three six vigilance. That could be, that could, yeah, that could be anything, right? And so they'll continue to play cards that you're, very often your foretell is not going to be good. It's it's not going to be a wrath, a vast majority of the time, right? It's going to be something that interacts with the board. And then this is going to be a blowout when it happens. And not only that, the foretell is three and not four or five or six, right? So you can actually play the foretell Doomscar and another spell. Like you can play... For t you can play Doomscar, I'll foretell, and play a two or a three drop. And so you're not going to be the last of the board. You're actually going to be the first of the board. And you can conceivably attack into whatever they play the next turn. Like, this this card is good. Yeah, you can double spell on your Wrath turn. Right, with this. This this card is good. You're always, even, you're always going to play this. You're always going to play this. This card's good. How often are you going to play around this? I mean, you're not. That's that's the cool part about this. Is that with Fortel, like, Fortel gives you a natural way to progress your game plan without actually putting creatures onto the board that your opponent can't interact with, right? And this is even good on the draw. Your opponent can go two drop, three drop. You can go foretell this and to play it on turn three. Like this card, this card's great. Looking forward to playing with that and losing to it a lot. What? Two white, white, flash flying, three, four. What? Off the bat, it's already a nine. I'm just going to put it in nine. I'm not even read the, I haven't even read the rest of the card. Uh, enters the battlefield. You may exile any number of non-angel creatures you control until Glorious Protector leaves the battlefield. Okay. You may exile any number of non-angel creatures you... Doesn't target. Okay. It costs three white... Oh, it also has Fortel. Dude. Okay. That's so weird to have Fortel and not have the reminder text. Okay. You may exile. It doesn't target. Yeah, Fortel, I feel like, should be on top and not on the bottom. That is super weird. That is super weird. Like, if the card didn't have Fortel, it would still be great, right? I mean, it'd be a limited-only card. It, but... It's not Restoration Angel. It's not Angel, so it doesn't loop with itself. Yeah, I mean, this card is good. You always play it, right? All right. Rally the ranks. Two mana. Oh, there's not much to say about this. I mean, the ability situational, you always play it. The card, the stat line is great. Everything about it is great. You just play it. They're just... The nuance... The nuance of the card is just going to come up from game to game. But it's always going to be great. You always... So... The creature stay exiled as long as this is in play, so you can't like flicker your coming to play abilities immediately, but you can eventually, so. Rally the ranks. As Rally the rank enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one plus one. Shared triumph, yeah. There was a card that gave plus one plus one and vigilance. There was two and a white, right? And two and a white that gave plus one plus one and then ascend vigilance, or what was it? I forget what the, what the name of it was, but it, it was in the Ascent set. And that card was bad. And so I would expect this card to also be bad. All right. Riding God of the Worthy. Flying Vigilance, 3 minute, 2, 3. Full stop, you'd play this card. Snowlands, your opponent's control, enter the battlefield tapped. Who cares? Oh, Rally the Ranks? This is a card you're never going to play. This is a two, sorry. 
This card is just bad. You would need at least you would need at least nine to play this, eight or nine. This is probably gonna be worse than that plus two plus two enchant creature that we, we gave a no go earlier, a spectral steel. It's gonna be worse than that. Yeah, this card's bad. It looks so good, but it's really not. Non creature spells your opponent's caught cast, which can very much cost four or greater, cost two more to cast. Yeah. Yeah. I, l l let me specify this that you need eight matching creature types on Rally the Ranks to be minimum to play this, right? Minimum. If you don't have eight, don't even bother. Even if you have eight, you probably, probably don't play this. I mean, if you have like the token maker, maybe, right? This thing. If you have Usher of the Fallen and you're like a spirit and you have like spirits and warriors, maybe. Maybe. But I you want a minimum eight. Anyways. Non-creature spell. Okay, so that's trinket text. Who cares? This card's good. You're always gonna play it, right? So I'll put it as an eight. It's actually probably closer to a seven, honestly. Let's see the flip side. If a source an opponent controls would deal damage to you or a permanent you control, prevent one of that damage. Uh, whenever you or another permanent you control, okay, that's trinket text. Counter the spell unless it plays one, whatever, who cares. By the way, that's a really poor way of putting that. I thought that, that they had designed themselves out of do, making cards like this. It's a really poor way of doing it. Thankfully, we don't have to deal with real life card games for now, for next for the next year at least, and not until 20, 2022. Um, but that is really poorly worded because what's gonna happen is people are gonna pay three mana yeah, it's the Frost Titan problem, exactly. Same thing with Frost Titan, where people are going to just, like, have two mana, play it onto your card, and either you or them are going to forget it, and it runs into the conundrum of, like, is it my responsibility to remind my opponent that their card has this effect? Like, that is really murky territory, right? Now, obviously, with digital, with digital play... We don't have to worry about that. The triggers will happen automatically. I'm talking about real life stuff. When, when it comes to real life gameplay, this is bad wording. The correct wording is on a lot of newer cards to say, spell is a target you or a permanent you control costs one more to play. Now that, that's no nonsense. You can't even play the card unless you play an extra one, right? So there's no, there's no funny business right like if your opponent if your opponent plays a two mana card and they have no extra mana on your card that is just not a legal play they can't even do that there's no murky territory there the problem is the way it's worded it's very murky territory and i i it's bad yeah tithe taker is an example of a recent magic card that has it correct right Um, I guess the advantage of Valkmira is that it stops Grape Shot, but it would stop Grape Shot anyways, right? Because of the first part. So I, I'm really not sure. There is, it, it is technically better. Right, I guess it is technically better to have the effect the effect on the bottom be like the way it's worded as opposed to like things that stop is it walking ballista? But it was stop walking ballista anyway, because you have the top part, right? So like what is the bottom part of the card doing? It is technically better that it does this, unless it's against abrupt decay, but how it costs four, so who cares? I I'm not sure like because Grape Shot copies what you have to pay one for each Grape Shot, right? But negating the fact that it would already deal zero damage. Who cares? The Grape Shot copies would uh, would also have to pay one, right? Because they, be, they become the target of a spell or ability. I think that's how it works. Tendrils of Agony? 
I, I'm not or brain freeze, right? Does it stop brain freeze or, or tendrils? I'm not sure if that's if that's the reason for the wording is legacy. Yeah, anything that's a copy wouldn't be affected by cost one more to cast, but it is affected by pay one more or it's countered, right? Yeah. So like if it's if it's for other formats, who cares? I mean, this is more of a, this is obviously it's aimed for constructed. Last night barrier was a pretty OP card. But that was a cantripping three mana enchantment. Um, this is not, this is a four mana artifact. That's probably not worth a card. Obviously you always play it if you're white, but it's not a reason to be white. Anyways. Righteous Valkyrie, three mana, two, four flyer. What? All right. It's already a nine. It's already a nine. I'm not going to read the rest of the card. Never mind. Okay. Whenever another angel or cleric enters a battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Sure. As long as you have seven, at least seven more life than your starting life total, creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Oh, no. This is a 10. We got our first 10. We got our first 10 of the set in white. And let's be clear. Let's be clear about this. This works very weirdly with lifelink to your advantage to your advantage imagine this imagine you have imagine you have you're at 25 imagine you're at 25 and you attack with a 2-2 lifelink and you attack with this fellow you're at 25 you have that you have that card in play and they block with a 2-2 their guy will die and yours will live that is how that is how it's going to work so this works extremely well with lifelink creatures it essentially will give your lifelink plus plus o plus two assuming that the lifelink that you gain would put you over 27 or what is it at least seven more? Okay, so push you over twenty six, so twenty seven or more. Yeah, it would be a four forward two marked on it. That's right. What? Another completely bizarre thing is that this thing hits itself. It's not only does it work with itself, it hits itself. It's a four six for three when it's on. And if you have two, obviously if you're constructed only, but if you have two of them, you gain four life off the second one, right? This card is bananas. This is this is a ten out of ten, and this is a bomb. This is a card you would splash for, depending on your deck. I mean, if you can gain life, obviously, if you can't gain life, then who can, then obviously you wouldn't splash for this. But assuming that you can gain life, which means you're either like main white or main black, right? Yeah, this card's bananas. We finally see what a ten out of ten looks like. Yeah. I mean, you still don't play Revitalize. I mean, maybe you do, but Revitalize works both ways with this card, right? Not only does it gain you the life, but it also brings you one card closer to drawing this, right? So you would play the Rune and you would play Revitalize if you had this card in your deck. I mean, it, 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 it depends. It depends. But yeah, this card is good. It might be closer to a 9. Just because I may be underestimating how long, how hard it is to get to 27 life. I don't think I am, though. There was um There was a 3-minute 2-2, two -two, right? The game became a 4-4. Four -four, the game life. And that card was really good. It was Angel of something, right? Angel of Revitalization. Angel Vitality. Yeah. Angel Vitality, is that what it is? Yeah. Plus 2-2 two, two flying. If you would gain life, you gain that much life plus 1 instead. Plus 2 plus 2 as long as you have 25 or more life. That card was pretty easy to turn on. I think this card's, I think this card's doable. Runeforge Champion. Enters a battlefield. You may search your library and or, gra and or graveyard for a rune card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. If you do, search your library to shuffle it. You may pay 1 rather than pay the mana cost for runes you spells you cast. I mean, do you play off-color runes with this dude? Probably not. Probably not. It depends. It depends, like, how easy, how bad it is if you have a blank in your hand. You can search your... It, so if you just have the one rune, this can hit the one out of your graveyard. So, I mean, obviously this is a card that's, like, all runes can trip. Okay. This is going to be a four mana 
two three something. Right. Well, this is a rare. The odds of you having two of these are pretty damn low. <laughs> but I mean, th this is an eight in the deck that actually has runes, right? I mean, white doesn't generally get a way to draw cards, so this is going to be if you're if the runes all draw a card, this is going to be a, a four mana two three draw a card plus something, which is good, right? Even if you have just one rune, you can loot away or rummage the loot. I mean, I don't know if there are those types of effects in this set, but it could be potentially mana fixing too. Yeah, it's an eight in the in the right in the yeah. I mean, it's an eight in the right in the right deck. Obviously, if you don't have a rune, then obviously, if you don't have a rune, this is a five. But I'm I I have faith in my viewers. I have faith that you're gonna not play this card unless you have runes. All right. We found our first Snow Matters card, all right? Search your library for a Snow Permanent card, a Legendary card, or a Saga card. Reveal it. Put it in your hand. Shuffle your library. You gain one life for each Snow spent to cast this spell. So, on our little chart, we see that it's a Snow Matters card and it costs three or less. So the odds, this is going to gain about one life. <laughs> right. This is going to gain about one life. Maybe two. Likely, the average life is probably going to be around one for this card. We'll see. Whether Idyllic Tutor, I mean, so in Kamigawa Block, which was legendary based, there was Time of Need? Which was a one and a green. Search all the way for a legendary a legendary creature and put it in your hand. And that card was okay. You played it. If you had like at least three legends, you played it. To be clear, you need at least three hits with this. Although when it says snow permanent card, you're always gonna have three hits with this. Right? I mean you can hit a land worse. The, the fact that this can hit lands actually is a pretty big upside, now that I think about it. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can find your snow dual land. There's snow dual land in the set. Okay. This 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 is probably a six. It's either a five or a six. It depends on the deck. I haven't seen this set. I haven't seen this set. I don't know if there's like legend like were any of this were any of these snowy? I didn't even check. Not snow, not snow, not snow. Okay, none of these creatures were snow creatures. None of these are... Wait, where are the snow creatures? Are they just not white? Okay, there's no white creatures that are snow. Okay, well... <laughs> All right. Maybe this is worse than I thought. All right, let's make this a five. Let's make this a five, then. No snow. We'll deal with that later. The problem is, if you pay three... If you add three mana... and If you add three mana to the cost of any saga, they suck. <laughs> so unless it's like Kiora Best of Sea God, which was like the the end all be all saga, like Bamo, seven mana, like eight eight Kraken, Hexproof, tap all your things, gain control of a permanent. Yeah. I I'm I'm off this for now. This is a cyborg card. If your deck is amazing, maybe. Sigrid God favored. Oh wait, this can hit legendary things, right? Legendary card. Oh, we can hit this. Whatever. Who cares? I'm not paying six for that. I'm not a legend. Okay. Well, whatever. <sighs> Flash, first strike, protection from protection from trinket text. When Sigrid God Favored enters the battlefield. Exile up to one target attacking or blocking creature until Sigrid leaves the battlefield. Banish your like the problem with these types of effects. No, it's not a solid five. It's a it's at least a six. It's a solid six. The problem with these types of effects is the problem that they've always had, which is one of the reasons why white has always sucked in limited. Is that banish your priest slash fiend hunter type effects? is you open yourself up to getting actually completely blown out. So 
If Flash first strike for three isn't terrible, cards like that have existed in the past and they've always been bad. Like, if it was just a Flash first strike three mana 2-2, two, two, you would never play it. Right? So, it has Trinket Tax, two cares. And Exile up to one target attack. The thing is, this can't clear away blockers, just can't push through damage. And that is the, I think, like, it is optional at least. If you're you're living a pipe dream, if you think your opponent's attacking with the next two, and you're gonna just like play this and just like they're gonna attack with like a two two and a three three, and you're gonna play this, you're gonna you're gonna snap up the three three, you're gonna block the two two, and they're not gonna have anything. That's not reality. That doesn't happen. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. And if when when you do do that, they're gonna like. Okay, thanks for blocking. They're going to give like plus one plus three to the 2-2 to the two two you just blocked. And your guy's going to die and they're going to get their 3-3 three three back. So, it's whatever. This is a six. If you're white, you play it. If you're not white, you don't care. It's not a big loss. You're playing sealed. There's not going to be two twos in play. And a vast majority of your creatures are coming to play creatures. The good ones are. So... I mean, this 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 will permanently kill a token. There aren't that many tokens that I've seen. There's like that two minute two two that makes one one flyers, and that's good against that, I guess. Halvar, God of Battle. Creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strikes. Okay. At the beginning of each combat, you may attach target aura or equipment attached to a creature you control to target creature you control. That is super weird. So, what... What is weird to me about this card is that he doesn't reattach runes. Because we talked about earlier how the runes... The cool thing about the runes is that they were never bad. Never, never dead because you can enchant your land turn two. Right? Because it's enchant permanent. And this dude, he can't take them off your lands. It says, at the beginning of each combat, you may attach target aura or equipment card attached to a creature you control. So if it's on your land, you can't get it off. Which is like, that, like, what is that? That seems like a pretty big oversight. That's, that's just a massive, or, or if it's on, like, if it's on you, your vehicle. Right? If it's on your vehicle, it does, you can't do it either unless you activate the vehicle. And you can't move your opponent... You can't move pacifisms either. Oh, you... you Okay. You can't move your opponent's... You can move your opponent's pacifisms off your creature onto another of your creatures. But you cannot move the pacifisms that you have played on your opponent's creatures to another one of the, your opponent's creatures. This, this is so weird that there's like so many misses. Like it's a white card. Let it be good. But it's just, it has all these, it has, these aren't even core, like Math at Midnight, I don't think these are corner cases. I don't even think, I, I don't think those are corner cases at all. I think they're just like real cases. Now I, I wouldn't expect, I would not expect you to be able to move your opponent's passivism that's on my card onto their card. I wouldn't want it to do that. But I think moving your auras, like moving your passivism from one of their dudes to another one of their dudes, I think that should be like, that should be a thing that the card can do. It doesn't even do that. Oh, you're right. It doesn't even work with equipment. Oh my goodness. If the equipment is not attached, it doesn't even work. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right. This is a this is a mythic. Let it be good. I, the card is obviously playable. If you're white, you play it. If you're not white, you don't you don't care, right? 
Equipped creature gets plus two plus zero and has vigilance. Whenever a equipped creature dies, return it to its owner's hand. Sure. That's card. This card was an actual magic card, right? Wait. Wasn't this an actual magic card? I feel like it was. Wasn't this like an actual equipment that they made in the past? You know what it was? It it was it was an equipment that gave it like plus one on vigilance and when it died you made it one one spirit, is that what it was? And that card was great. Yeah, this this card is really good. Yeah, vigilance is exactly what you want on this type of effect. It's just like bricks you're like you're you put on your 2-2, it turns into a 4-2, and your opponent, like, you attack with it, and your opponent's like, okay, well, oh, was, is it a Grixis Scythe? Yeah, I think it was a Scythe, wasn't it? It might have been a Scythe, blue, black, red Scythe, or Slayer's Plate. Yeah, it was Slayer's Plate, that might—that was probably what it was. Yeah, there, there have been effects like this in the past, but this is probably the best one. This card, because like like I said, if you have a two two, you attack and you put it this on. It's a four two, and you're especially if it's a two two life linker. Yeah, this is good. I'm much more impre I'm much more impressed by the sword than I am the ha than this this duder. This duder is a four four net text. Four four trinket text. I'm much more impressed by this. This is 4-4. Four, four. This is 4-4, four, four, and every single time your opponent plays it for the first time, they're just going to pause. They're just going to pause, and they're, it's just not going to do what they think they're gonna, it's going to do, right? They're going to try to move their pacifism. They're going to try to get their, get their rune off their land. They're just like... They're gonna put the ability in the stack and they're gonna like file a bug report saying, I can't move my aura off my land onto my creature. Demand reimbursement. This is 4 4 QA nightmare. This? All right. We'll, we'll, get, we'll give this, we'll give this like, we'll give this a nine on the backside. It's nine plus, right? Because the equipment is really good. And this is just bonus. T it's a. It could be a four-four if you want it. So. Yeah, it's like a. Yeah, may yeah, maybe like. Yeah, maybe six. Because if I if I buy six out of nine, I'll put two thirds there, right? Oh no, it's not good. Uh, it is nice. Yeah. All right, Resplendent Marshal, flying. Three mana, three, three. It's already a nine. Three mana, three, three, flyer. It's a nine. It has text. When Resplendent Marshal enters the battlefield or dies, you may exile another creature card from your graveyard. When you do, put a counter on each creature you control other than Resplendent Marshal, that shares a creature type with the Exiled card. That's a lot of text. Okay. Imagine this scenario. You have like a Grizzly Bear and a Soldier and Resplendent Marshal, and you have a Grizzly Bear in your graveyard. You play this, you exile the graveyard, your Grizzly Bear out of your graveyard, your Grizzly Bear turns from a 2 2 into a 3 3. Your Soldier gets nothing because it is not a bear. Technically, it is a bear as a two cost two two, but it is not a grizzly bear. If you remove a changeling, I don't know how your changeling got to the graveyard, but if it did, all your other creatures get plus one plus one counters. Okay. I think this is, uh, I think the dies is so weird. Because the dies trigger makes me believe that I can exile itself, but it can't. Yeah. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, when it goes to the graveyard, it is not the same entity as it was in play. Therefore, it is another creature. But that's not the way it works. You can't exile itself to its ability. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know. I know. But they're different entities when they're... Okay, whatever. Well, we'll go beyond that. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, you'd think that you'd always get a counter out of this, but that's just not true. Regardless, it's a 3 mana 3-3 three, three flyer. You, If it was just 3-cost three, 3-3 three three, three flyer, you'd always play it. All right. It has text that may or may not confuse you, that may or may not do something <laughs> on turns 5, 6, or 7. So, yeah. All right. Starnheim Unleashed. All right. Create a 4-4 White Angel Warrior. Okay. Create a 4-4 White Angel Warrior creature token with flying and vigilance. <laughs> Create a 4-4 White Angel Warrior creature token with flying. Okay. All right. If this spell was foretold, create a... X of those instead. Okay, so if foretell equals zero, you pay three mana for nothing. If foretell is X equals one, you pay two and then one, one white. So two and then two and a white. So you pay four colors and a white for a four, four flyer and vigilance flying Sarah Angel. You make a Sarah Angel. Okay. Where it really comes into play is two plus five for a pair of four four flyers. And it's splashable at X and a, this is a 10. You can foretell a turn to turn two and then whenever you draw your planes, this, this is a card you splash for, this is a bomb. Always play this. You could be a green-red deck, and you're like, okay, I'll play, I'll, I'll play a planes. I'll play whatever mana's fixing I have for white. I'll play my snow-covered planes. And a way to search for a basic land. And here we go. Yeah. Well, two plus five gets you two four four flyers. Yeah. Yeah, this is just... This is a ten. This is an actual... Okay, now that we've seen a ten... Now that we've seen a 10, that other card's not a 10. Righteous Valkyrie's a 9. Now we, now that we see what a 10 actually is, this one's a 9. And that, that'll that make, and now that I've seen that, that makes for Splendid Marshall an 8. Okay. Not, this, that's what this card has done. That's what this card has done. The fact that this exists, it's like, oh, this is this is what it actually needs to be to be a ten. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I get it now. It's warp the the fact that this exists makes it every other card worse. Yeah. Yeah. I can't search for it this, right? It's nice snow. It's not like a snow sorcery. Wait, this is a snow sorcery? Oh, this only finds snow permanent. They thought about the combo. If it could find snow cards, it could find itself. It could just like pay three, gain three, find another, pay three, gain three, get another. <laughs> they thought about that. Can't do it. <laughs> All right. This is not a snow, snow permanent card though. Yeah. Okay. This is bananas. So that's white. That's why the Shepherd of the Cosmos is a little, a little bit worse too. Let's let's put the Shepherd of down. Oh no, this is a good. This is an actual eight. What am I thinking of? I'm thinking of the one minute two one. What's that one? This this card's an eight or a nine. Yeah, this card's great. Okay, oh, this card is. I foretell this card being quite good. I foretell this card being quite bad. But this is this is a nine for sure. Yeah, for sure. 
This is a two two this this is gonna be a two two and two one ones. Two one one flyers. And that that has been a that's a power uncommon. Like that's a that's a really good uncommon to have. Does this work on your opponent's turn? Yeah, it says each turn. You can you can if you play two instants on your opponent's turn, you get one one, absolutely. Yeah, this is yeah. I'm looking forward to playing with this one. Usher the Fallen, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, Usher the Fallen's a seven. Yeah, that's a good. It's a good seven. Like this card it gets better the more the better your deck is, too. It scales really well. If your deck is bad, this card's never seen that not like this card requires you to be able to brawl, right? Because it has to be able to attack into like a next three. And yet yeah, you have to be able to punish them. That is Doomscar. Now yeah, Doomscar is really good. How do white commons look? Well, white commons still look kind of a medium. I mean, white commons are pretty darn pretty darn bad, right? Like this is whatever. It's, it's fine. Bad, bad. It's whatever. Bad. It's whatever. Can be good depending on your deck. Same with this. Bad, bad, bad. I don't know what to think about this one. Bad. Whatever. Bad. This could be good depending on your deck. If you have that life leak, if you have life matters. Bad. The white commons are really bad. <laughs> Which is. Yeah. Bound on gold. Pacifisms are always worse than they look. Always worse than, than they look. I mean, there's only like... There's only two cards I would say at eight in white. Which is Bound in Gold and uh, the Stalwart Valkyrie. Which only, this doesn't even seem like an eight to me. It seems like more of a seven. And this Doomscar Oracle is probably more of a six. The three mana three two. It gains life. That's more of a six, I think. So far, not impressed. White has probably maybe the best card in the set. But I think they have a few they have a few good uncommons. They have Clarion Spirit and Doomscar and Regulus Protector are rares, but We'll see. Looking forward to see what other colors offer us.